we have closed our mind. We just think, so Europe will give us charity, GSP, they will give us for free. They don't want us to give any uh, in return. We don't have to open up. But that's not the way. The situation as already described, and as you all know, you know, seems quite hopeless. But it happened to many, many other countries. They were in similar situations. But somehow they got up, changed their policies, and moved on. And I think in the next whatever 10 minutes I have, whatever time I have, I'll, I'll give you a few examples of how countries have done and so how, what can Pakistan do. Um, you see, if you, um, first let me give, uh, ex explain to you that what, what is our current problem, why our trade is not picking up. We don't realize it. We think Pakistan is a very open country and you know anything you can see in the markets, etc. But actually, we are one of the most inward looking countries. We were not like that, not up to about 20, 30 years ago. But uh, somehow from 2008 onwards, we have been closing in and that has been adding to our difficulties. And uh, the countries, that have been opening up, you see, I mean, you know, for the last, uh, in our own lifetime, uh, if you uh, visited uh, Dubai 30 years ago, or India 30 years ago, or China, and all these countries, they were inward looking. And the situation was not as good as, as, as they are now. Uh, unfortunately, uh, that's one thing, we are very inward looking. And the other thing is that most countries, uh, you know, s especially since the 80s, and they started regionalizing. They started uh, trading within their region. And it's, uh, it's not just uh, uh, developing countries. Even developed countries who are very well off, they realize that individually they cannot really flourish. So they, they try to uh, regionalize. I, I used to work in, in Brussels in the... Uh, late 80s and 90s, and I, uh, and Belgium is a small country. And anywhere you drive up north, south, you know, for one hour you come to a border. And one of the nearest border was uh, uh, the French border. And I could see all these trucks lined up with their papers, trying to show the customs inspector, looking everything. So. You know, just crossing from, say, 60 kilometers from here to there used to take them for hours. And it was much, much worse if you want to enter any of the East European, Czechoslovakia, et cetera. There used to be, I think, I think they would take at least, you know, a whole day, two days in the, in the queue. And then they realized, you know, there's something wrong with this thing. Let's, let's open up. Let's try. And so they, they did away all those barriers and even have a single currency and uh, become a, a, a big strong block. And just even if you look at, uh, say, trade angle, maybe at the time, 93, internal trade was something like 600 billion, and now it's at least five times more, you know, 3,000 uh, uh, billion. And um, unfortunately for Pakistan, we, didn't uh, get, and, and that, that uh, success led many other uh, countries to think about it. ASEAN countries did the same thing. They started uh, integrating in North Americans, uh, in Mexico, uh, Canada, etc. And countries that became a part of th these groups, they started growing, they started doing well. Unfortunately, Pakistan go, uh, never got into any of these. They, 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 they tried. Some of these are very political. They say, okay, we are a member of DA, D4, this, that. The only real chance was uh, uh, this South Asia free trade uh, area with India, etc. We, we, we uh, entered into this. And first it was a preferential. Then we thought by 2006, okay, now we are ready to go into a free trade agreement. But Pakistan's heart was not into it. While the rest of the uh, South Asian countries, they started integrating, their trade flourishing. Now, I'll give you an example of, say, Bangladesh. Bangladesh was, you know, hardly any trade with India, maybe a few hundred million dollars or something. And now their bilateral trade with India 
in, in that uh, SEFTA context is something like 16 to 18 billion dollars. And where is Pakistan versus India? Less than a billion dollars. So we, and all the studies indicate that, say there was a recent study from, from the World Bank. They said if you normalize trade with India, your exports will grow by 80%, you know, uh, uh, more than double. And it's not necessary, some, some people say, but you know, India is going to send everything here and we, will, we won't really have anything to send to India. It doesn't work like that. For example, Bangladesh exports maybe 2 billion, India 15, 14 billion, you know, so high. But what they do is they get something from there, they add value, they export to other countries. For example, if we are short of, say, cotton or anything, we go all the way to, uh, you know, Brazil or somewhere we get it. It becomes so expensive if you want. And, and also, it's, it's not that the trade is not taking place. Trade is still taking place. So India, we, if our importer wants something, they ask their, their Indian uh, counterpart, send it to Dubai, send it to, uh, say, Singapore, repack everything. So the, the cost goes up by, you know, 20, 30 percent. Um, I, I met somebody from India and he said, I, you know, I used to export this white uh, chana to Pakistan. And my cost was, say, at the time, uh, I, I remember he said, six thirty dollars per ton. And, uh, and he said, another 30 ton would be for freight, etc., 660. And then they stopped. And then they said, I'm still exporting the same thing to Pakistan. But first I send it to Dubai. There it's repacked everything changed, and now I'm, the Pakistani buyers pay me $200 extra for all, all this happening. So we, uh, first thing we have to do is, fortunately, I think I, I heard yesterday from the, um, our uh, new foreign minister that we are looking into it. But in the past, somehow these things didn't work. Hopefully, this thing will work this time. So um, I think that the title of the talk was, well, how do we need to recalibrate? So we don't have to invent anything new. Just look at any country, any successful country. How did they do it? And we just have to do that. So I said, let's, let's look at, say, Vietnam. Vietnam, after all those wars, etc., was a very, very poor country. I mean, by, it was the least developed country. And they had hardly any food. They would, you know, they, kind of there, they had no trade, nothing. And um, so by mid 80s, their leadership thought, oh, that's not the way to go on. We have to change something. So they said, okay, let's restructure, re and open up. They called it Dui Mui in, in, in 86. They said, what we will do is, first we will open up our economy. Whatever our own barriers, we'll get rid of them. We can't do about something about other people, but our own barrier, our import barriers of this thing. And also we are trading all the way, we go to Bulgaria or some the, such country. Why, you know, export there and get something there? Because they were, that, that was the communist bloc. They said, we'll trade within the region. And uh, first they did was that they joined this ASEAN in 93 or something. And uh, they, they, they realized that they're for, at the time when they opened up, say, there were $500 million of exports. Pakistan was three times more, one and a half billion. So by, uh, uh, when they started opening in the region, by 95, they caught up with us. We were about 5 billion. They came 5 billion. And, uh, uh, you know, and then they started whoever country was willing to sign up with them, and they, they opted for signing up, they were bravely signing up with every big economy. Say, they signed up a free trade agreement with, with China, with, with, with the US, with, with the European Union, with every country. It was a third world country, and now it's become, and, and the poverty was more than 90%. Now this year, the poverty is less than 1%. And from five billion in, in 95, they are now 300 plus billion, 330, 50. Pakistan, the, from that 5 billion, has only got to 25 billion. One of the reasons was this rent seeking. Our industry is extremely 
afraid of competition. They think that or they have these huge tariff protection. So they want to sell within the country. They don't want to go out. But unless they go out and compete, you know, it's like you keep your child all the home, you know, 18, oh, he, what, if he goes out, somebody will beat him up or something or the other. And uh, if, if, if after 25 years you ask him to go out in the street, it will not adjust. That's what is happening to our industry. And a couple of hopeful signs that I see. In the last eight months, I was looking at the latest figures and our agriculture exports uh, I'm not running beyond my time. Okay, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll finish quickly. So our, our agriculture exports jumped something like 57% in the last eight months. And uh, I said, well, you know, if, uh, and they, they came something from three and a half billion to about five, six billion this year. And I said, if, okay, we can't have, we cannot continuously go on this 50% up. But even if we have half of that, Within three, four years, our agriculture can be our number one export. A small country like Netherlands, which is 20 times smaller than Pakistan, and doesn't quite have the weather like we, they export something like over 10 billion. So why we should just be stuck with, and, and mostly on the importing side, why can't we export? So this, um, uh, unfortunately, uh, I sometimes have discussion with uh, uh, Bridget uh, about this GSP and, and about uh, textiles. The, no, I mean, Vietnam, etc. they never went for GSP. No, the India, etc. they don't go for GSP. They don't want something, some charity. They want to compete. They want to have a free trade agreement so that, you know, they are also able to, their, their industry is also able to face some competition. Well, I can realize for the time being, there's no choice perhaps. Perhaps for the time being, we have to have this GSP plus. But that's not a long-term solution. I, I remember in 2014, when we got this 10 years of uh, GSP plus, they said Europe is giving this. And there was a lot of euphoria in our businessmen. They said, oh, we will now, in 10 years, you'll see Pakistan will go to 200 billion, 100 billion. And I said, look, I mean, if you just get one little textile sector, and some little, uh, is this is not going to take you to, and that's what happened. We were, when, in 2014, we were, you know, about similar uh, exports, and, and then 10 years later, when this, uh, uh, the, 10 years later, about two or three billion, well, but that would have naturally happened. So we have to think beyond, G what, what do GSP plus type countries are like Mongolia, like uh, uh, some, somewhere in Peru, somewhere, uh, those, those kind of countries. Maybe the only uh, regional country perhaps is uh, um, Philippines. But Philippines has it's adjusted itself to ASEAN and they are independently signing a, an FTA with, with Europe. So we have to, have a radical change in our export policy. We have to, uh, in our trade policy, I should say. And, and just not care, I mean, all the countries, uh, not all the countries, but many, many countries have this dispute with their uh, neighbors. India and China have big dispute, but, but they have a flourishing trade, more than 120 billion. China exports something 100 billion to India, and India, uh, China, look at China and, and, and Taiwan. They don't even agree on the name. They don't even recognize. They say you are a province and, and all that. But in terms of trade, they are they're very open. I mean, they, uh, look at Turkey and say Israel. I mean, uh, Erdogan makes all those big speeches. But when it comes to trade, he's very open. When it comes to tourism, he never stops them coming. Because he realized that the two things are independent. So by just holding on that we will not open unless some issue is solved. That is not the way because I don't think India would, would, would ever consider that, okay, if Pakistan open, we'll give away Kashmir. Okay, when maybe at, in, in some future time, like well, Germany had this, the two, two Germans and uh, they, they didn't try. I mean, they said, okay, we will uh, build our economy. We'll open up West Germany and one day East Germany just fell into their lap. So we have to improve our economy, and the shortest cut of any country is through trade. Trade is the engine. Unless we concentrate on trade, 
trade policy. I, I don't see another way out. But as I said in the beginning, that many countries did it within a generation, within 10 years, within 15 years. So if Pakistan changes policies, I'm sure they can move on the right track. Thank you.